Okay, now that we have our Expo app, you can see that the web version of React isn't super different than the iOS or Android version of React outside of the custom components in React Native and Expo. But right now we have a single component called app and everything is in that app. This just isn't, isn't sustainable moving forward if we have all of our stuff in one single file. And so we want to start organizing our files right now so that it's a little more uh, cleaner looking moving forward. So we're going to move a few things around and uh, we're going to reference back to the sell that app that I went over before. So if we do command D and we go to Expo Home, um, our projects is where our current project is. You can see Instagram on Tim's MacBook Pro. But if you signed up on Expo in your command line and in the uh, app itself, you can see any projects that you've done in the past that you've done Expo Publish for. So this allows you to share um, apps with other people just by getting the Expo app and we'll, without having to go through the whole app review process. Um, it's really great for testing with other people. And so I have a couple apps here, client or personal. Uh, but the one that's most like all this code is based on is Sell That. So Sell That is the app that I built. I just finished it last week. I built the whole Instagram UI, um, and I made a lot of changes along the way. So my approach was I built it in my personal time without recording it, changed things around there, uh, went back and forth on the best approaches, uh, best practices moving forward uh, that I could teach you guys. And so that now I'm kind of rebuilding it this time uh, with that experience and kind of teaching you like what I learned along the way, what kind of I changed around uh, with going for the same look of Instagram. So you can see that if you saw the previous video, this is the sell that app that I created. Um, it has all the same functionality as Instagram, um, but it's all using React Native and Firebase. So you can like a photo, unlike a photo. Um, you'll get notifications uh, if you if this is your photo uh, that I liked it. Um, you can see the location of said photo uh, with maps. Um, you could also use the camera feature. Right now, it won't work in the emulator since there's no camera. Um, so, no, that won't work. Um, so, in the emulator, it won't work. But if you have the Expo app, you could test it that way. So that's why. I, using the Expo app for development is super helpful as well, like using the location, using the camera or the photo upload. Um, it's awesome to test it right away and get feedback right away, whereas you wouldn't get that with a native uh, app. Um, you could do comments and see comments on different photos. You can see this one has one comment. Um, and then you can make an offer. So I changed it so that you could make an offer, uh, like selling goods and to people in your neighborhood type of thing and find people close to you. So you can make an offer on that item. Um, and then you could also search. So you can search for people. And that'll be everyone on the database uh, with the name Tim. Uh, you do a photo upload. You have an activity feed of liked, Tim liked your post, aka me. Um, someone commented on the post. Someone made an offer. Someone started following you. This would be all in the activity feed. Um, and then, of course, the profile of all the photos you've posted. And here, uh, right now, this is my profile. Uh, so I can see like my followers and who I'm follow or who's following me. I can edit my profile. And then if someone comes to see my profile, they can... Um, so if I see someone else's, which is just me, different accounts, I can follow and unfollow that person. Um, and so, basically, all these different pages we're going to treat as different components. And within each of those pages, there might be smaller components uh, depending on if we're reusing them or not. So if you're ever reusing something, uh, chances are it should be its own component that you could reuse it through other sections. Uh, and it just makes it for a cleaner, uh, more streamlined uh, coding process. And if you need to change anything, it's a lot faster and quicker. And so we're going to start off with a couple main components. So we're going to make a home component, a search component, an upload component, an activity component, and a profile component. There's going to be a lot more than that, but we're, that's how we're going to start. And to start, we're going to just create a folder called, make sure we're in the right folder. Yep, we're in Instagram, and we're going to make directory screens. So in the previous web application, the React Creative app named it SRC for source. 
I like to name it screens in the app because each I think it's more clear that um, like the home if you do home.js I think it's pretty clear what it's referring to in the application itself. So that goes back to making your uh, components clear and everything that you create uh, clearly named. Um, while I made the app the first time, I kind of renamed a lot of things a bunch of times to make it clearer to you guys what I was referring to. So that was one thing that um, I would make sure you get right the first time, uh, get a higher level review of what you want to build and what that entails, and then the naming convention around that before you even get started. You could always change it down the road, but uh, it's certainly easier right now. So we're going to name a couple files for this main uh, bar at the bottom. And these are begin are going to be the beginning of our. Oh crap! I didn't see the end of the screens. Okay, we're gonna fix that real quick. So just move these things that I just created in our screens folder. And now everything's in our screens folder. So these are just empty files for right now. Um, and we're going to move everything out of this app.js file because we're going to add a few more things for React Navigation and Redux that needs to be at the core of the app, and this is the first file that gets read. So we want this to be very minimal. Um, all our functionality we want to be in a specific screen that correlates to that functionality. Uh, so we're going to copy this right now, and we're going to put it in Home. So we're just going to name this Home, and in here, we're going to remove all this stuff. And we're just going to call home. I'm going to remove the styles. I'm going to remove all of this. So we could just import home from. Now, this naming is important. So we have to go inside the folder and then go to home.js. So basically, slash screens dot or slash home.js. So we're going to the screens folder and going to home.js and that's how we call home. And we want to get out of this app so we can actually see what just happened. So it looks exactly the same. That's because it should look the same. But now we have everything in our home JS component, and we can see that by just doing home. And it's a lot easier way to do this, but make it clear home, how many apps we're going to build, and that's being called by app.js. Uh, next thing we want to do is abstract the styles. So right now we only have one style uh, container, but this is using creating everything a flexbox, doing the background white, and aligning items, center, and justify content center. So just a quick CSS uh, for Flexbox. Uh, display Flex is basically Flex 1 in uh, React Native and Expo. And then you need that style in order for align items and justify content to work correctly. So what align items does is align items aligns it vertically. So now that it's all aligned to the left. And then horizontally, <laughs> sorry. And then if you remove just the back content, you can see it goes to the top of the, the page so that aligns everything vertically, whereas line items is horizontally. So I always get this much wrong. But usually when I create a style, I'm using both of those, so I want everything in the center of the page, especially in the application. Um, so usually I create a style just for those. Uh, but we want to move this to its own style sheet. So in the main folder, we're going to create a new file called styles.js. And we're basically just going to copy and paste this styles and put it in the JS folder. What we need for that to work is style sheet. So notice how this is a React Native component. Style sheet right here is creating this style sheet called styles. And so, since it is in its own file now, we have to do export default. 
styles. So just like we have to do export default with the component itself, you have to export default with the style sheet as well. And then in order, in order to call that, we can remove style sheet up here since we're not using it. We're going to do import styles from now we're in the screens folder, so we want to get back out of that folder. So that's dot dot. So if you want to get something in the folder, it's one dot. If you want to back out of that folder, it's dot dot slash. So that means you're navigating out of the folder in our style.js. So styles.js. And now there's our styles that we're calling the same way. So you can see that we're actually calling it if we can remove it and everything is misaligned and off the screen. If we add it back, now is our style. So now we can just add everything to this one style sheet and reference it in different parts of our app instead of copy and pasting that same code uh, every single time we create a component. Um, some code that we do want to copy and paste is this basic component. So every basic component is going to have a few things So every component, you can basically start with this set of code. Every component is going to need React. Basically every component you're going to need styles that we just created. And then you can add different components based on the need. So if you have a text in the view, which we do here, text in the view, you can import it. Or if you want to import other things, you keep adding it per component. But almost everything is going to have this. You have to do export default. So you're just exporting this component out of this app so that when you call it, so that when you call it in a different screen. So if we were to do, say we wanted to export, we wanted to use the class, but we didn't do this export default. Well, you get an error because app.js is, it's, since it's not exporting it, it won't find it. So that's how we have to, why we have to do an export default, we're just exporting that component to be able to use in other places. And so I'm actually gonna copy and paste this code and so that we can uh, have something to start with instead of just a blank sheet every single time. Um, this will be a lot pretty helpful once we start using React navigation and you can be able to switch between each screen. So right now we literally just have home screen uh, all the functionality is there but there's no way to get to the other pages that we just created. So that's what we're going to do in the next couple of courses, next couple classes. Um, is in implement uh, React Navigation along with Redux so that we have a global state and we have a way to navigate between each, uh, each screen, each page, each component, whatever you want to call it, uh, and have that global state available. So I hope you join me for those episodes coming up next. See you.